Um, I, did, I did not you know, graduate from, from Duke and have a, a clear path. I did not know that I was going to run for office. I did not know that I would uh, serve in, you know, in, in a high level in, the, in a presidential administration. But I, I would say it was just a, a pursuit of working with professional people on big issues where individuals can make a difference. And that started in the Army. The majority of my career was in the Army, uh, so 11 years active duty. And um, it was there where I really got a sense of human agency and getting big things done. It's, it's interesting in the military, you learn a different type of, of leadership, and especially in special forces. Um, you learn that you don't just show up, put your hands on your hips, say, we're going off this direction, everyone follow me, because you have to. Um, you learn how to listen. And whether that was in special forces, in my campaign, or in my current job, that's the first thing I did, is I got folks together and I, what do we need to start doing? What do we need to stop doing? What do we need to continue doing? Um, and so when you talk about having a shared vision to inspire others and all that stuff, it's really the other's vision. And it's surfacing that in a way uh, that allows you to lead them. Tony's a friend and, uh, and he's, he's been a mentor of mine for, for quite some time. And for those of you that have taken a class with, with Tony or, or are about to, you'll, you'll see why. And he just does things differently. He tries to get to know students as people and you get to know him as a, as a man and as a person. What's interesting is I, I had an opportunity to teach about 10 years after I graduated Duke. I found myself doing a lot of things that Tony does. Uh, you know, I still remember the taste of the cookies that, Tony's, uh, that Tony made when he had all of his students over to his house. And so when I was a teacher, I, I started doing that as well. Not the cookies, but I invited all my students over and, you know, really challenged them to do a, a individualized approach to what is their passion, what makes them tick. And those are things that I would, if you look for a source of that, that's probably Tony Brown's class. Don't wait. Uh, you know, I think that, that there is a natural inclination to wait for things to align, for the stars to be there, to the planets to be there, to the garden path be laid out. And, um, and I don't want to say to not take risk, but coming to Duke is not a risky choice. It's a great choice. It's hard to get in here and all that. But then like, truly taking risk and not waiting on it. Uh, you know, Goethe said, you know, you know, dare greatly and mighty forces will come to your aid. And I'm a believer in that. So taking risk and not waiting. You know, I think I am a big believer in relationships. And Duke, I was hustling, I was running around a lot, I was leading a lot of organizations, I was trying to do my academics. I didn't take a lot of time. I, I've, I should say I've taken more time since then on really kind of developing relationships. And it takes time, it takes effort. And that can be, you know, in, in a basketball line, that can be over a beer, over a meal, whatever it may be. But there are incredibly unique people at this school. Uh, I'll give one quick example. My last semester I went and did the Duke in New York program. And which was a great, I don't know if it still exists, but it's a you know, great program, uh, leadership in the arts. And you know, for three and a half semesters, I kind of got to know the people I hung with and got very familiar with them. And then this last semester, it was like a reawakening of Duke. I was with 15 new students who I hadn't really known before. And just, you know, I, I was just amazed again of just how eclectic, how diverse, how unqualified I was to be here, but like lucky yeah. and thankful I was. So taking advantage of those opportunities here is, uh, you, you just got, you'll never have this chance again.